Hi, just a quick note before you watch the next video. I am Luna, I'm Italian, I live in the north of Italy, in Venice, and I teach ESL and Italian online. My boyfriend Nick lives in California and he's American. We are watching movies together all the time and we thought it would be interesting to comment on them and on the different perceptions and cultural values of these movies from an Italian and an American perspective. By no means we think we are accurate 100%, so forgive any dumb mistakes we make, but they are made in absolute good faith. Enjoy the video and like, subscribe and follow me on social media. Buongiorno, Luna. Buongiorno, Nick. So, uh, we just watched The Godfather, all three hours of The Godfather. Il Padrino. And yes. The Padrino. And we haven't talked about anything. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how you want to do this. Maybe you want to start before we say anything too specific about what might be spoilers in the movie. Do you want to talk about what value the film would have for somebody learning either an Italian learning English, an English speaker learning Italian? Well, um, so I was wondering the whole time what happens like for an American watching it in English, like do you have mm -hmm. automatic subtitles? Because in my version there was there were no subtitles. And so I was wondering because mm -hmm. a lot of parts in Italian were kind of important. So that's very interesting because I watched the uh, Francis Ford Coppola restored version, okay. which I guess is a, a new version, you know, remaster, whatever. When I watched it on my own DVD, when I did watch my DVD, mm -hmm. there were subtitles for all the Italian stuff. This time I noticed there were no subtitles in the restaurant scene. Whoa, okay. But then when Michael is in Sicily, there were subtitles. Yeah, because like- so I don't think that was a mistake. And it's it's very nice for me to have What's that? It's not relevant, maybe, like in the restaurant scene. I, don't know. I think you could still follow the scene without it. Yeah. And it was a little bit about a scene of two people who don't really speak Italian mm -hmm. trying to yeah. come off like they speak Italian. So there's a little bit of that. And I think I had the benefit of knowing the film and also knowing a little bit of Italian. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So it, it was interesting when they did or did not use subtitles. On the other hand, for someone like some Italian watching it in English, to me, Marlon Brando was almost incomprehensible, either because of the volume or because of the prosthetics. Uh, yeah. The way he was speaking, it was really almost incomprehensible. And I had watched the opening scene in Italian because uh, you can find it on YouTube. And it's interesting because I thought that the, uh, the man who goes to uh, the Godfather was speaking in Italian in the original, but in fact, uh, he, he's speaking in English with a very heavy accent. Uh, and, and I think this applies in a lot of places. How accurate is that accent? Was it that is. guy really Sicilian? Yeah, it's very, very accurate. I don't know if he was Sicilian or he was like a, a good actor. A good actor, yeah, uh, an Italo-American yeah. actor or something. But yeah, that that accent is very believable. Uh, which where we never really believe Marlon Brando yeah. is actually Sicilian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, or uh, Al Pacino. Like mm. every time he tries to speak Italian, he is really artificial in the way he speaks it. So, yeah. Brando? Uh, and no, Al Pacino too. But I think that is authentic because yes. he is yeah. second generation. He's struggling with it. Yeah. He got a lot better after his time in Sicily. Mm -hmm. But nobody's saying he speaks perfect Italian. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting before watching the movie, you and I talked about that scene where I said, somebody says, we're going to speak mm -hmm. Italian. I'd forgotten that guy was Turkish. So oh, wow. nobody in that scene was a native Italian speaker. Okay. And that guy was just posturing okay. by speaking Italian. He was doing very well. Yeah, and clearly better than, than Michael. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think it helps people? Like if, if, if I'm an Italian learning English? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like it's... Uh... 
it's kind of hard to follow, I think, if you don't have a very good level of English. Like, okay, I'm not that much into all the strategies of the different mob families. And I'm like, yeah, okay, they're going to kill each other at some point. <laughs> I'm not really following closely. Uh, it uh, It's very interesting to see the, the part in Sicily because that's very authentic. And okay. yeah very small details like i don't know like the the posters uh, that announce people's death uh, which mm -hmm. are exactly like they are in italy and uh, uh, and there's a poster for aranciata did that exist in 1946 i'm pretty sure it did yeah like everything yeah. looks very very uh, authentic and uh, even uh, during the wedding like she is distributing mm -hmm. the sugared almonds that are definitely okay. something that we do like uh, oh, a lot of small across details across Italy. Yes, yeah. Uh, it, it is interesting that there there's this lame cliche of an American who watches that movie and says, "Oh, I I love Italy," and I I I, I very I become that person like, "Oh, I see all the things I love and I want to go back." But there was a, a moment where they're just sitting outside. Um, you know, it's like 12 people around a table outside a restaurant, several bottles of wine, those little glasses with water. And there's just something about that, like, that felt like, oh, yeah, yeah, I really have that feeling of I, I want to be back there. There have been times at, at the Sagra or, or um, not so much with your family directly, because except with your brother, I don't know that we've ever sat outside like that, yeah. but we've sat outside with friends at a Sagra and it felt like, okay i got that little beat of like oof yeah i want to go back there <laughs> yeah and it was all very real and uh and i was surprised because even all the actors that were speaking sicilian in those scenes they were like to me being from venice so i don't know from a sicilian point of view but they sounded very real like they were speaking Sicilian. So this is an authentic example of the different dialects or the different yeah. sub languages it was oh, yeah. legitimately yeah Sicilian I, and I felt like I understood some of it mm -hmm. and I don't know if some of it is because I'm very weak in Italian or because it's Sicilian but I feel like I could have followed a little bit of it uh, yes and I felt the same like in some points I did I didn't catch some words because they were okay very specifically sicilian um but yeah it's uh it's and you didn't get subtitles yeah <laughs> okay interesting um yeah how authentic was mama the michael's mother i think she was pretty authentic she okay. she felt a little too modern maybe like I would expect her to be, I don't know, more conservative, more, I don't even know, like I, I would yeah. imagine a veiled mother or something like that. Uh, but yeah, she was pretty authentic, even at, at the very beginning with the uh, wedding of uh, the song. Michael's sister. Yeah, when they were singing the song, they were singing in very okay. believably in Italian, as you would expect, yeah, like, like from a first generation, uh, immigrants in uh, in the states, like yeah, yeah. She felt like the most authentic. I mean, of of the main family. Like mm. when you get to the Undertaker and the Baker, they felt pretty authentic. But it, like Brando never felt yeah, that authentic. No. I don't know about Clemenza and Tessio. Uh, ish, yeah. They yeah. they don't feel like if you stop and think about it, they don't feel like like immigrants of a first generation or a second generation yet yeah, like eh, you should speak a little more more authentically and and also like it feels like a marlon brand in particular is trying too hard like he's trying too hard to be like this sicilian character well he's trying very hard to do a character yeah like he is really charactering it up yeah He's pouring work into designing a unique on-screen character. Mm -hmm. And it's very memorable. And, sure. And I think it is. And I don't know why, but I was very confused when he died. Spoiler alert. I, I was watching you. Yeah, you were, you were affected. Yeah. And it's a beautiful scene. And that could sure. have been the movie there. 
Yes, but also I have this memory of him in a wheelchair as an old man. And I was like, wait, I thought it would get older <laughs> in yeah. a wheelchair. Where did I see that? I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm mixing him up with like Mr. Potter from It's a Wonderful Life or something. But yeah. Um, but he wasn't it. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice the oranges in both scenes? No. There's, there's this, you know, when he is gunned down, he's buying the oranges. Mm -hmm. When he actually dies, he's playing okay. with the Okay. Okay. Just a little. Yeah. And I guess, wow, well, we probably should mention that we're in full spoiler territory <laughs> if somebody hasn't seen the film. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that the, there were some stereotypical, and I don't know if it became stereotypical after The Godfather or not, but like the mm. horse head in, in the bed. But you didn't know that was happening. Oh, I knew. Like, oh, did as you? Soon okay. as I, it seemed like you were. As soon as I saw the, the horse in the scene before, oh, okay. I was like, okay, that's ending up in someone's bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Okay. Anytime you've heard of that, it's absolutely a reference to this movie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have, I have no doubt about that. Because I have a feeling that happened in real life, but I don't know if that's accurate. That's interesting. I, I'd want to research that. I don't know about the horse head specifically, but I, I think there's probably a real story behind that. Yeah. I mean, Johnny Fontaine is supposed to be um, Frank Sinatra. Uh, yeah, he's okay. supposed to be Frank Sinatra. So there's probably a Sinatra story like that somewhere. Okay, I see. Yeah, and then it was interesting when there were the dead fish later on in the movie, because that reminded when me... When my uncle Lucas sleeps with the fishes. Yeah, and it reminded me of, uh, uh, of the Irishman, because we had fish there, too. That's funny, I don't remember that part. Because in the back seat of the car, it smelled like fish, because they had, mm, had fish. So there was this whole thing about that fish, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe that's a reference, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think it's interesting how much of the movie you knew having never seen it. Um, leave the gun, take the cannoli. Is that something you've heard? No, no yeah. that was fun. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good. Yeah. No, but yeah, I knew very little and clearly I didn't know that uh, Marlon Brando died <laughs> eventually. I'm still <laughs> recovering from that. I, I had a unique, I don't know how unique, but an interesting experience the very first time I watched this. Years and years ago, the very, very first time. And I'm curious if you had anything like this. I did not know until halfway through the movie that that was Al Pacino. <laughs> and, and I think that's good because in the beginning of the movie, you're supposed to think he's insignificant. You know, James Caan is the son, you know, and, and this is just some young guy who's going to be a small part of it. <laughs> and we see him having this, this weight slowly, slowly, gradually, like not thrust on him, him accepting and embracing this week wait at, until at some point i realized oh that's al pacino he's the guy in this movie D did you know immediately so i think he's he's very young yeah extremely young and i didn't recognize him the first time he was on screen i disagree with uh, or i didn't feel like he wasn't important like since the beginning okay. like in the wedding like Marlon Brando is asking for him. He's asking, where's Michael? So he must have some relevance. Well, there was a very, very important line. The, that's my family, Kay. That's not me. Mm. So clearly there was like, there's something to this kid. Yeah. But, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's fun to learn what that mm -hmm. becomes yeah. without immediately knowing that's Al Pacino. Yeah. He's clearly the main character. And, and for the rest of the movie, I was trying to, is that Al Pacino or somebody else? Like, of the age range that I'm mixing up yeah. with faces. I'm not good at remembering names. Um, but, but yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting and uh, shocking when the first wife, like the Italian wife dies, like that was yeah, really shocking. Um, uh, what's interesting about that you and I often watch movies mm -hmm. and something shocking happens and you are knocked on your ass. And I'm like, I, I knew that was coming because of the pacing of that scene. Okay. And maybe this movie is why. Mm. 
because of course that is shocking but now every other movie that has that moment is doing that mm -hmm. you know and i can feel the rhythm of the scene lulling, lulling us into this moment mm -hmm. of kaboom yeah. you know <laughs> i want to say kaboom. some but who, who knows what movie i might be spoiling by saying it yeah and it, but i feel like in the rhythm i can start to see that <laughs> yeah and it was interesting that she was driving a british car yeah, and that hit me for a second. I realized, well, this is just after World War II. Yeah. The oh. British Army might have left some Rolls Royces laying around. Yeah, and that's fascinating. Like, that's the smallest de detail that really makes sense yeah. in that contest. You, know? you, you were laughing when she's like, I, I speak English <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> Yeah, that sounded exactly Which, like some of my students. So, yeah. Well, it sounds funny. exactly like me. <laughs> Jovidi e Verdi is, I, I don't know why I can't get those right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure I've been exactly that. Everybody's been exactly that at some point. Um, yeah. yeah, the scene at the hospital it's like, gave me a real video game vibe. <laughs> the Last of Us. <laughs> like, where's okay. everybody? Where's the monster coming out of the corner? Um, but it, it was a very important moment where Michael doesn't want to have anything to do with the family. Yeah. And he's put in that position and he snaps into it. Mm -hmm. Like he is the puzzle piece and that hole was waiting for him. He just snapped in perfectly. Yeah, His hands were not shaking. Mm -hmm. And God, such a testament to the filmmaking. The restaurant scene still had my heart racing. <laughs> I know exactly what's going to happen. And still, it's so tense. It's, you know, yeah. just tremendous filmmaking there. Yeah. And, um, and also, I, I really liked how they measure time uh, by using the black eye. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can definitely tell how long it's been since the last scene because his black eye is... Yeah. It was kind of worse. jarring when they said like, you know, the meeting with the five families and I want to make arrangements to bring my son back. The next scene is him going to Kay and she says, when did you get back? He said a year ago. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys are just skipping right past yeah. an entire year and it's... And nothing relevant has happened. Yeah. 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 And it's interesting how... Uh, even that meeting with all the mob families, something like that definitely happened. Like I started when the mob families met in Atlantic City, I think, to like just Yeah, buy that, their... I wouldn't be surprised if that's real. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean. And you see it in The Untouchables, you know, mm -hmm. whether that's something that Al Capone really did, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so detailed and so studied, like it's impressive. Really impressive. And and often repeated mm -hmm. in, in many movies. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, immediately Dark Knight comes to mind. Mm -hmm. You know, so many movies just recycle that scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> and also the other But it's fun to see where all these things come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's uh the the masterpiece that uh that started it all. And um yeah, it, another detail that I <laughs> that I really liked was at the very beginning, during the wedding, they're giving envelopes of money to the couple. Mm -hmm. And that still happens today. It's like, that, that's the wedding gift. I was curious, because I've, I've only been to one Italian wedding. Yeah. And, you know, it was smaller, but then, of course, this was a very, you know, stupidly wealthy family. So. Mm -hmm. But that stuff felt pretty real. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, uh, yeah, and I, maybe it's not so, like... Um, evident now it's more like uh, I'll send you the money before the wedding or it, it will okay. be more discreet but uh, yeah that's still the thing <laughs> and I guess that was something I was wondering and a big part of what I was curious about this movie is this idea of people who are Americans who live in New York who call themselves Italians mm -hmm. you know and in a way they absolutely are in a way you could say they're not mm -hmm. and this is 1946 so yeah. many of them literally would have come from italy yeah. so i don't know how you feel about that i mean those people referring to themselves as italian I, what do you think of that i think it's 
it's fair uh, because there was uh, at some point one of the people asking for favors was about a visa. So mm -hmm. that was a real thing. Like they were Italians, they were just there. Um, they had been there for a few years. So yeah, it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Even if they, well, they're, they're cooking spaghetti with meatballs, but that's what I was going to bring up when Clemenza is making the sauce, <laughs> which, by the way, that's a Francis Ford Coppola thing. There's a recipe in many of wow, them. Most okay. of he sneaks in. But yeah, you were not approving of Clemenza cooking the sauce. I mean, I think, I think to be honest, it's quite a, an accurate recipe. Like, it didn't seem too outlandish. Uh, okay. So a lot of garlic, of course, but... Um, yeah, he was using sausage, I think. So it's a thing that it's uh, it's still cooked uh, today, I think, in southern oh, Italy. Okay. I was going to say, it's, that is for real here in America. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, you've been to Buca di Beppo. Like, yeah. that is, oh, God. Yeah. that very much is the sauce that we would eat and call Italian. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's southern Italian for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's uh, it's surprisingly accurate to, in its depiction of Italy and Italo Americans, and I was surprised at the fact that it's not making not, not making fun, but you know, like like I don't know, celebrating the mob or anything like that. It's uh, it's very tragic and very it doesn't make you like that kind of lifestyle or environment, I guess. But it does bring something to our, our, our culture that it's super cool, you know? In the end, you're left feeling Michael's the coolest guy ever. Do you really? You, you should be feeling the tragedy of it, but, you know, I mean, these are, I, these are cool guys. I'm not saying I, I want to be like sure. him, but that's like the, the cultural impact. God, that's scary because my my impact was you're all gonna die of a violent death at some point very soon. So yeah, it wasn't all that glamour. And and I think it's an accurate depiction of what the mob and the mafia used to be back then. Like that's very important to keep in mind. 1940s America or in Sicily before coming here? Both. I mean it's a depiction of that story in that particular period of time because then mm, mafia escalated to like this organization that just had no rules anymore and was killing babies and women and, uh, and everybody not that it was a good organization before, but it had this honor structure, these rules, this right. family protection. And, uh, you know, there, yeah. there's something that had a big impact on me reading about the Medici family, mm -hmm. not mafia. It's, you know, more Renaissance era, different region. But still, when I think about political corruption mm -hmm. and nepotism and things like the mafia, there's something tremendous that I read about the Medici family. I don't remember which of the Medici said this, but the basic idea was once you have a lot, a lot of wealth, a lot of property, prosperity, somebody is going to try to take it away with, take it away from you. Mm -hmm. So we have to do whatever we can do to protect the prosperity yeah. that we've built. And that seems like an incredibly noble and reasonable goal that when you walk down that path, it doesn't take too far walking down that path before you fall into corruption, nepotism, bribery, exactly. you know, mm -hmm. infiltration of the government, the Vatican, the everything. Yeah. But it makes me understand where it comes from. Sure. Protection exactly. of your family yeah. because somebody will try to hurt your family. Yeah. And, and that's the basic principle of the mafia at the very beginning and uh, protecting your family from even crime or retaliation when the state is not able to do that and when the police is not acting on it like in the opening scene of the movie like these guys are walking free we have to do something and that's where everything starts going awry. would i be right in saying that there was a role of the mafia as protectors 
in Italy immediately after World War II or even during. Or even before. They, yeah. they would be the ones who could protect the people. When yeah, we're talking about these larger 1800s with the unification of Italy. And then the South was pretty much left to itself. Uh, mm. And so these powerful families emerged as those who could protect uh, in exchange for favors and power and so on. And so they infiltrated every level of power and politics and, and police and whatever. So, uh, was there something to, um, they're walking through the streets of the Coliana village and he says, where are all the men? And Fabrizio says, they're all dead from vendettas. Mm -hmm. And that's not a phrase I've heard before. Was that something from the war? Was that something that you're familiar with? Well, vendetta is, is a just a revenge. So I guess there were different uh, factions uh, just fighting each other and, uh, and they were all killed in the, in the process, which is very... I took it as a fallout from the war, but I have no idea if that's accurate. I don't think so. No, I don't think the war has anything. Just general conflict. Yeah, between families. Yeah, and that's very revealing because in the end, that's pretty much what's happening on the other side of the pond. So, yeah. yeah. Taking care of all the family business. Yeah, exactly. S settling the family business. And to be honest, at the very end, he doesn't lie to his wife. Doesn't he? No, he did not kill. He had him killed. So... Uh, I, mean, <laughs> I, I wouldn't take that position. I, I think that's absolutely why. Yeah. And, yeah, and but... that, that door close is just one of the foundational moments in film history. It's just such a tremendous yeah. moment. God. Yeah. It's, he's the padrino. And speaking of that, like, just to make clear, like godfather, godmother, or padrino, madrina, that is not necessarily a dirty word. Like, yes, that's the um, the hierarchy in the mafia system and mm -hmm. there's higher and lower hierarchy compared to the padrino. But I have a madrina, I have a godmother for my baptism. Uh, I have one godmother for my confirmation. Like that's the thing that- Sure, it's, it's the same have. thing here. Yeah. Godfather is a real thing and yeah. it's just the honorarium that they put on that person. Yeah. And, you know, as a recommendation for anybody watching this who might be interested, uh, Brian Michael Bendis wrote a tremendous comic book series, uh, The United States of Murder, Inc. Mm -hmm. And the idea is the mafia got so out of control that they seceded from the United States. Oh, wow. <laughs> so the state of New York and, and close regions around there are governed by the mafia. And then other parts of the U.S. are governed by the U.S. government. And the, the leader of that family is simply called Padrino. Okay. So uh, it's interesting. And if you want to, it's an, it's an interesting story of like this hypothetical of what could happen when that gets so completely out of hand. Mm -hmm. Kind of a fun book. Yeah. And, uh, and that's uh, also another aspect that is very real, like the rejection of any other authority figure. Uh, like uh, when outside of the wedding, they are taking down the, the license plates numbers and okay. they just, reject like the id of the policeman that is showing them okay. fbi got no respect for anything <laughs> yeah and uh, and that's very real like in um in the um, mobsters who are uh, in prison in italy they don't recognize uh, the state as a legitimate figure no. that can tell them what to do and uh, the, when they were discussing about uh, uh, having inmates uh, working, for example, or uh, doing community service uh, or something like that, regularly mobsters would refuse because they don't recognize the state as uh, an authority that can tell them what to do or what not to do. So. Is that very regional? Uh, I mean... Or it happens everywhere. <laughs> That's hard to tell. Like, I mean, uh, most of the famous uh, mob uh, trials uh, happened uh, because of the Sicilian uh, mob mafia or uh, Campania with the Camorra, stuff like that. 
but there are uh, very famous mobsters in the north as well that infiltrated the uh, infrastructure and the uh, other Unions yeah, industry all the system so yeah it's everywhere okay you're ready for movie trivia sure i will fail <laughs> So which, which two uh, creative uh, people in this film were uh, contributed to the film Superman? I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. So Marlon Brando played Jarrell, the the father of baby Superman. Oh my God. Donald. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. And there is super drama with who should be credited with writing of the film Superman. Okay. But Mario Puzo, huh. who wrote the book, The Godfather, is credited as the writer of Superman. Oh, wow. He probably just did one draft. Tom Mankiewicz probably actually really wrote the movie, but Mario Puzo is credited. Okay, he didn't know that. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> okay, here's your other trivia question. Which big time Hollywood director did you see on screen? Uh, nobody. You'll never guess, but what? <laughs> nobody. No, you saw somebody. You'll never guess, but you won't be surprised. I, I'd say Scorsese, maybe? No. I don't know. Sofia Coppola. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not surprised. So the, the baby who's being baptized. Oh, my God. Like the godfather. That's Sofia Coppola. Wow. 1972. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's fun. Right? Yeah. Wow. So what did you think of The Godfather, your first year? I liked it. Like... As I said, I'm not into all the strategy mobster stories, but I'm really into all the atmosphere and the general rendition of very small details. It gets a little campy sometimes, like the, okay. um, the beating scene of... Uh, um, Carla. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah, the choreography was not so convincing yeah, on that. Yeah, it was not, yeah. but, but it's cool. But they clearly wanted to see James Caan. They wanted to see his face in it, mm -hmm. even though he couldn't throw a fake punch. I think they made a choice there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, very. You seemed more affected by Kay and Apollonia th than I ever was. Well, yeah, because I empathize with them. Like, uh, yeah, and it's, uh, it's a tough position they're in. And they don't know what they're getting into really came more than Apollonia, but still they are not completely aware of what's going on and uh, who they're falling in love with. So, yeah. I think there's a version of this movie that's Kay's story. Okay. You know, I, I think that is a very fascinating story, yeah. especially that door being closed in her face at the end. And the, yeah. that balance with that line in the beginning, that, that's my family, Kay, that's not me. Mm -hmm knowing that she's going to have that door closed in her face at the end is yeah. there's a version of the story that's her story mm -hmm. yeah and also like why didn't she get married in the meantime why didn't she move on from him like she was really in love with him and that's what she got so yeah that's kind of heartbreaking but yeah i really liked the movie and i'd be curious to did you see the second one? <laughs> that was my question. I hear that the third one is pretty terrible. That's what all the reviews say. I, I don't share that opinion, but I understand that opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with that common opinion. Um, we were talking, and I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think there's a book for the third movie. I don't think that's based on any book source material. Mm -hmm. And it goes in a weird direction. Mm -hmm. But not weird. It just doesn't feel quite the same okay and it's still kind of strange to have w watched um irishman not long ago and seeing mm. <laughs> like al pacino is now young and i can see where they pull the images for the his the aging in irishman but still yeah kind of surreal yeah he's a different guy yeah so did you like the movie I did. I, of course, I've I've loved it for years, and you know, it's been at least a couple of years since I've seen it, and and I was looking forward to watching it again. And 
like I said, there, there's moments in this movie that are supposed to put you on the edge of your seat, get your heart beating, make you very nervous. And the fact that those still fire on all cylinders, even though you know exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. That says something about and, the quality. Yeah. 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 I enjoyed it. I did too. All right. So we'll see what happens when we watch the second Godfather. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to figure that out at some point mm. and what other movies we might want to check out. Yep. Okay. okay. Well, thanks for watching The Godfather. Thank you. And one and all that.